welcome back. We are here in the Metallurgy Laboratory and we're here with the program leader, Marco Nunes. So, Mr. Nunes, what are some of the things that you test here in the laboratory? The main materials we test here is construction materials, um, mostly made of metals, right? We dedicate it in determining the quality of materials made of metallic metals, yes. And what are some of the things that you test for, especially against standards? Uh, those typically like uh, reinforcing bars, galvanized sheets, bolts, nuts, anchor bolts, um, automotive parts, and the sort. You test automotive parts as well? Yeah, we test um, for um, composition, for manufacturing processes, and so on. It makes me feel that there's a lot of collaboration between both the standards and other, well, bureau standards and other, some agencies like that but how do you get how do you get them in terms of like the things that you test because we see some things in front of us here and we're going to ask you to do that in just a bit but is it that you go get samples people bring them to you what is that process like yeah it's both ways actually we can actually go and collect samples from clients or uh, they can come and submit it um, regarding the of standards uh, yes we we closely collaborate with them we have an excellent partnership with them. Um, we actually work as a supportive um, unit for them when they have um, you know, issues in the system. They are the ones authorized to, um, nationally authorized to do this type of test, but they always rely on us in terms of, um, of um, backup plan, if you want. Additionally, uh, anyone, um, any private or public entity could submit samples to us and we will test it for them. That's not a problem. Can yeah. it may have been the first question, but let's take it to this time. Yeah. What is the importance of testing metals? Why do we need to test them? Yeah, it's extremely important to know the quality of the material you're using in construction. Um, if these materials do not meet the required minimum um, standards, um, actually you could risk you're risking to have uh, problems with your the, the building you are putting together, the um, structures, or uh, any of the sort. All right, thank you so much. So we're actually going to get the opportunity to see you test some materials now. Yeah. So we look forward to that. Great. So what we have here is a portable unit. Uh, it's called the Positive Material Identification Unit. And this is used to determine the chemical composition of metals. Right. So it's actually very simple to use, very user friendly. Um, having here a standard, a stainless steel standard, that we're going to actually test to determine chemical composition. Right? It's, it's just a simple thing, just to actually aim the um, probe onto the material and then press the trigger, and the test starts right there. The test takes approximately, approximately 30 seconds to run, and what we'll have on the screen is the entire chemical composition of the material we're testing. We will also have a breakdown of every element of this material. We're almost there, four more seconds. Right, that'll be good. So as you can see, we have the entire chemistry of this material, as well as a matching alloy, right, which is the number up, up, up here, and you can see it's actually what we're testing here, a duplex 220S, 05S. So this entire shaft completely fracture. And they want to uh, determine uh, why this, it failed. This was part of a roller system from the, in a factory in Point Lisas. So what we're doing here is a full inspection, as well as chemical composition, a fractography, and other tests to determine why this shaft actually failed. in the metallurgy laboratory we would have spoken with the program leader marco noons time now for deputy lab manager 
Rene Gomez. So I am about to demonstrate the use of the X-ray fluorescence spectrometer, XRF as it is commonly called. So the purpose of this machine is to determine the elemental concentrations present in any unknown sample or compound that would be submitted to us for analysis. So what we would do would be to introduce the sample into the machine using these special cups and the sample would be inserted into the machine making note of the correct position because this could test up to 12 samples at a time. So I would have placed it in position 5 and right now I'm going into the software which is already present on the screen and I'm going to introduce the sample ID characteristic to the sample. So I would have placed it in position 5 so I'm going to select that now. I'm entering the name for the sample. in the produce spectrum. So, and I just click analyze and the machine would rotate and the sample would then be inserted into the spectrometer whereby the x-rays are propagated onto the sample to get the characteristic concentration. So this test usually takes about 18 minutes to complete. So once the 18 minutes is finished, we would get the percentages of if it's iron, aluminum, whatever that is characteristic to the sample, it would produce that. So this machine is limited in that it can test, test elements from chlorine all the way up to uranium. So, based on whatever sample we get, it has the accuracy to determine that. So we have respective um, calibrations that are built into the sample, into the software, so that we can use that to calibrate if we have an idea of what the sample is. So this is the sample that we'll be testing. Now I'm going to demonstrate the X-ray diffraction spectrometer. So this is different from the X-ray fluorescence in that it measures the actual wavelength of the, ele of, of the sample to be tested. So as opposed to the XRF which gives the elements, the X-ray diffraction gives the actual compounds. So XRF will just give you elements on the periodic table. This would give you combination of elements. So you can get like sodium chloride, silicon oxide, you know, those different type of combinations of elements for things that people have unknown samples for. So I would have loaded the sample in and I'm going to now run an analysis for you to see. So I'm entering the sample information into the software. This would be the sample ID and the software in which this, the sample would be run from. And I would just execute the job. So when I click on this, the arm will start to organize the most. As you can see, the x-rays have been engaged and the machine is now taking the sample from the position and starting at zero theta. So it will start to test the sample and make a full loop until the sample is finished testing. So this usually takes like about an hour to complete. So you would get characteristic peaks and these peaks are what we would be using to analyze the sample. So this works in combination with the XRF so whatever 
elements that we get from the XRF, we would use that based on the concentrations to look in the XRD software to match the relevant compounds. So if there's high iron, high silicon, high chlorine or whatever present from the X-ray stand, we can use those combinations now to get the matching compound for the, uh, for the sample. So we've been bouncing around in the metallurgy laboratory. We now are speaking with technologist Rajesh Byron, and we're going to be getting a little idea what the DMG Universal Testing Machine is about. It's behind us. So Mr. Byron, thank you for the time, but what's going on with this machine? What do you use it to test? Okay, so this machine we tested, uh, we use it to test uh, rebars and um, wires and we also test for utility companies also, material for utilities. All right, so when you say, so one of the things I'm thinking about is how much it could pull. I don't know if I'm wrong, I okay. don't know if I'm right. Yes, well, the capacity so, of this machine is 600 kilometers. And when you say test, that's just pressure? No, it's in tension. Okay. Yes, yeah, well, it's in pressure, but in tension. All right, and so I think let's go through and see what's going on with that, because I know we also have technician, Michael Joseph, he's going to be here putting the machine through his paces, so we're going to see what it can do. All right, so right now we will test a, um, a reba. Uh, we'll just do a 10 test on a reba and you'll see how it's how it, how it done. All right. right. It's time for him to move? Go, go. Okay. So it's pulling in there? Yes, it's pulling. You hear that, right, Andy? You see, we start to see it moving a little more now. And it's going to move to the point of failure. And we see it moving. And it'll be loud. So you said before you, before you test the sample, you put some inch marks on it? Gauge marks. Gauge marks. Yeah, gauge marks. Okay. Yeah. Of 200 millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. So that will give us how long the material elongate. So after that, when the sample finish test, we measure and we give heat reading, which is 234.45. And we give you a percentage the material stretch. That's one. I really wasn't expecting that. Pow! So after this thing, mm -hmm. after this thing, uh, this is our graph of the test. We'll give you the heat of the tensile strength and uh, also the heat strength of the material, which is important to convert the ASTM points to ensure that the material um, conforms to the standard. Well, a wise man once told me it's better for people to invite you back than to ask you to leave. So there are so many more things that we could be finding out. We didn't do the IFTR, well, no, FTIR rather, 
and a few other tests, but at the same time, there's so much to be done, so much to be offered by Kariri. We want to thank the group for actually welcoming us into their space and giving us an idea of some of the services they offer to us here in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as the region. And on behalf of uh, the entire crew from TTT, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstar. Thank you so much for joining us.